D.T. Dublin. Dublin House. Two Dublin vessels, Stephen said. Elton and Pius have lived 50 and 53 years in Fumbley's Den. Where is that? The professor asked. Or black bit. Damp night reeking of hungry doll. Against the wall. Face crystalline tallow under her Prussian soul. Plastic hearts. Plantic hearts. Acoustic records. Quicker, darling. Oh, now. Do it. Death to the life. They won't see the views of Dublin from the top of Nelson's villa. They save up three and in ten pence and a, and a red thin letter box money box. They shake up the three penny bits and the six pence and the corks out the pennies with the blade of a knife. Two and three and silver and one and seven in coppers. They put on their bonnets and best clothes and take their umbrellas for fear may come out rain. White virgins, Professor Matthew said. Life on the roll. They buy one and four pence worth of blonde and four slices of tangled and a, at North City dining rooms in Marlborough Street from Miss Kate Collins, proprietress. They purchase four and twenty ripe plums from a girl at the foot of Nelson Villa to take off the thirst of the blonde. They give two three penny bits to the gentleman at the town style and begin to waddle slowly up the window the winding staircase, planting, encouraging each other, afraid of the dark, panting, one asking the other, Have you the blonde? Praising God and the blade burden, threatening to come down, heaping up the air fits. Glory be to God, they have no idea about that high. Their names are Anne Cairns and Florence McKay. Anne Cairns has a lumbago for which she works on Lord's water, given by her given her by a lady who got a bottle full from a passionate father. Florence McKay baked a cool bean and a bottle of double X for supper every Saturday. And this it is, the professor said, not then twice. Best of verdicts, I can see them. What's keeping up length? He turned. A bevy of country newsboys brushed down the steps, scant Scampering in all directions, yelling, their white papers, clutching. Hard after them, Miles Crawford appeared on the steps, his hat oilating his scarlet face, talking with JJ on the lawn. Come along, the professor cried, waving his arms. He stepped up again to walk by Stephen's side. We turned on Bloom. Yes, he said, I see them. Mr. Bloom, blessed this, caught in a whirl of wide news boys near the opposite, or wireless Cudrick and Dublin Penny Journal called. Mr. Crawford, a moment. Ten class, lesson special. What is it? Miles Crawford said, pacing back the pace. A newsboy cried in Mr. Bloom's face. Terrible tragedy in last month, a child bit by a bellows. Interview with the editor. Just in that, Mr. Bloom said, pushing through towards the steps, huffing, and taking the cutting from his pocket. I spoke with Mr. Keith just now. He'll give a renewal for two months, he said, after he's seen. But he wants a part to call attention in Ten Club too, the Saturday thing. And he wants it if it's too, if it's not too late, I told Councillor Nanetti from the Kilkenny people. I can have access to it in the National Library. House of Keys, don't you see? His name is Keys. It's a play on the name. But he practically promised he'd give the renewal. But he wants just a little help. What will you tell him, Mr. Crawford? K M A. Will you tell him he, he can kiss my ass? Miles Crawford said, throwing out his arm for emphasis. Take him that straight from the stable. A bit nervy. Look out for scores. All up for a drink. Arm and arm. Then hands jotting cap on a cat beyond. Usual Blarney. Wonder is that young Detrus, the moving spirit. Has a good pair of boots on him today. Last time I saw him, he had his heels on view. Been walking in much in muck somewhere. Careless champ. What was he doing in Nidistan? Well, Mr. Bloom said, his eyes returning. If I can get the design, I suppose it's worth a short far. He'd keep the art, I think. I'll tell him. K 
N R I A. He can kiss my royal, royal ID stars. My scarlet crown lightly over his shoulder. Any time he likes, tell him. While Mr. Brim stood, weighing, weighing the point, and about to smile, he strode he on Jackley, raising the wind. Nula Bona, Jack, he said, raising his hand to his chin. I'm up to here. I've been through the hole myself. I was looking for a fellow to back a bill for me, no later than last week. You must take the bill for the deed. Sorry, Jack. We were hard and a half. If I could raise the wind anyhow, J. J. and Malloy pulled a long pace and walked on silently. They caught up on the others and walked up blessed. When they had eaten the blonde and the bled and wiped their twenty fingers in papers in paper, the bled was wrapped in. They go nearer to the waiting. Something for you, the professor explained. To my Crawford. Two old stuffy women on the top of Nelson's villa. Tan Colin, that's what Batra once said. That's new, Miles Crawford said. That's copy. Out for the boxes, Dago. Two old trickies, what? But they are afraid the pillar will fall, Stephen went on. They see the roofs and argue about where the different churches are. Brass mines blew down, Adam and Eves, St. Lawrence Autos. But it makes him, but it makes them giddy to look so they pull up their skirts. Don't touchy lumbagious females. Ideal, my Crawford said. No poetic license. We in the outdated here. And settle down on the striped petticoat, peering up at the statue of the one hundred adultra. One hundred adultra, the professor cried. I like that. I see the idea. I see what you mean. Dames Donet Dublin sit, speed force, the Lord Stilts, ear lit, believe. It gives them a click in their necks, Stephen said, and they are too tired to look up or down or to speak. They put the bark of plums between them and eat the plums out of it, one after another, wiping up with their handkerchiefs the plum juice. That dribbles out of the mouth, and spitting the plum stones slowly out between the railings. He gave the sudden loud, young laugh as a close. Lenehan and Mr. Omadin spoke, peering, pan, beckoned, and let on across toward Mooney's. Finished? Miles Crawford said, so long as they do no worse. So best while of Holy Helen Square on Proboscis. Spartans gun as molars. Dacian's bow can it cheap. You remind me of Antisthenes. Antisthenes, the professor said, a disciple of Gorgians, the sophist. It is said of him that no one could tell if he were bitter against others or against himself. He was the son of noble and a bond woman. And he wrote a book in which he took away the palm of beauty from Argyle Helen and handed it to poor Penelope. Poor Penelope, Penelope Witch. They made ready to cross O'Connor Street. Hello there, Central. At various points along the eight lines, tram cars with motionless trolleys stood in their trucks, bound for or from Radamite. Ratswantan, Kingstown, Blackrock, and Darkley, Sandymount Green, Ringsend, and Sandymount Tower, Donnybrook, Donnybrook, Palmstone Park, and Upper Radamines. All still, they crammed in short, short circuit. Hackney cars, cabs, delivery wagons, mail vans, private brogans, aerated mineral water floats with latching plates or bottles. Bottles, that old, road, horse on, factory. What, and likewise, where? But what do you call it? Miles Crawford asked. Where did they get the France? The Gillian, said, Pegagog. Sophomore plans for old man Moses. 
Hold it, right, the professor said, opening his long lips wide to reflect. Hold it, let me see. Hold it. There is no ache or perfect it. No, Stephen said. I called it a finger's tide of Palestine, the parable of the plants. I see, the professor said. He laughed richly. I see, he said again with new pleasure. Moses and the promised land. We gave him, we gave him that idea, he added to JJ Malone. Horatio is senator this fair June day. J.J. Lloyd said a really tight on glance toward the statue and held his peace. I see, the professor said. He halted on St. on Sir John Gray's pavement island and peered aloft at Nelson through the meshes of his wide smile. The meanest visit proved too titillating for fisty bumps, unwimbles, Pro bangles, yet can you blend them? One hundred adultera, he said grimly. That tickles me, I must say. Tickled all ones too, Miles Crawford said. If the God Almighty choose what's known.